It's no secret in 2024 that merge kit and just the idea of merging multiple models together to get better performance without really needing that much more VRAM is a really hot thing. There are basically eight different algorithms that enable this and the dark art of doing this is actually more and more complex and has been getting more complex with every day in 2024. However, although I'm still working on my video about Franken merges and why this technique kind of works, I want to get into my new favorite model, which begs the question of how many merges can you actually put into a model to a point where you actually start to stop seeing improvements in performance? And what's crazy is Maxine LeBon has completely delivered with his model Alpha Monarch 7B, which is actually built on top of Neural Beagle, along with 50 other models that have been merged in a number of different ways into this model that now has given it one of the highest performance benchmarks among 7 billion parameter LLM. So welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So again, this comes from Maxine LeBon. We've covered some of his work in the past with Neural Beagle and he's calling this model Alpha Monarch 7B, which he describes here. I'm releasing a family of 7 billion parameter models that are top performers on many benchmarks, including NOS, EQ Bench, Empty Bench, and the Open LLM leaderboard. They also include a few new ideas that are quite promising for the future of 7 billion parameter models. And I'll link to this thread so you guys can read it in detail. So what makes this model special? So I mentioned this model just includes a ton of merges and by a ton, I mean about 50. So Maxime says here, I created around 50 merges to get this result, but they're based on a lot more than you can just see in this tree. So he actually created a tree of all the merges, which is actually kind of nuts. And he gives some context as to who actually contributed here. And basically the reason is some of the models he used were actually built on top of merges themselves. So whether or not they were merges of data sets or actual more kind of compressive merges, this is the result and it's pretty crazy. So the rough idea behind Alpha Monarch started from a discussion with another AI developer, uh, GBlaze X, and you should also follow him on Twitter if you don't follow Maxime already, basically with these two big observations, which is it's easy to get a good model on the open LLM leaderboard and it's easy to get a good model on MT Bench but can you do this at the same time? And the bigger observation here is that benchmarks are biased, but they're not always biased just based on who created them. Sometimes they're biased with models that do math or models that are more linguistically capable. So initially the answer was OmniBeagle, which was again, a derivative model from NeuralBeagle. And what was interesting was it worked really well, but it was a little too biased towards MT Bench. And Monarch models try to instill more reasoning abilities on top of just kind of static skills abilities. So one of the ways this was done was using DPO and a new set of high quality preference data sets, which basically means these are probably cherry picked to some extent, but kind of got the performance they were looking for. So by combining these with a distill label based on Orca, from Intel and Argilla, and Argilla has been contributing massively just to the infrastructure that made all of this possible, even just with MergeKit. And here, Maxime shows that it's actually the best performing 7 billion parameter model on EQ Bench, and that's a really big step forward. And he thanks Sam Peach for this. What's more interesting is that further DPO fine tuning using Open Hermes actually allowed this to boost conversational abilities without compromising its reasoning performance, which is something we see in a lot of these models. So basically it's kind of a one or something else approach. You get benefits in one area while compromising other areas. And I will say merging is an, a curious attempt to improve models that in many cases can get you these kinds of results. And the big thing that Alpha Monarch has done is it's done this in many different places. Slurp has been an existing area or an existing technique for merging that has given us these kinds of boosts, but it's really cool to see Alpha Monarch being a front runner in this whole system. And what's cool is Alpha Monarch isn't the only model that Maxime has released. He also released Neural Monarch, which is really similar in performance, except with MT Bench on multi-turn questions. So Alpha Monarch and Neural Monarch display really similar performance, but MT Bench is, in my opinion, one of the more important ones to look at because it includes a number of what are called multi-turn questions, which basically is reasoning based past just one question. So it's saying, consider this or asking this, and now this, and then basically referencing a prior question while still retaining context from the most recent question. And currently, even for models with really long context windows, this can get really hard because it's hard for them linguistically to understand where impetus should be placed or where kind of the weight of a question should be placed in terms of reasoning. So what's curious is it's not as good as Omni Beagle, 
but there are still interesting trade-offs that show up here. So for instance, we see Omni Beagle is still great. Alpha Monarch is basically throwing punches with the GPT 3.5 Turbo, which to be frank is where a lot of these 7 billion parameter models really perform. They're not beating GPT-4, but they're getting really close to GPT-3.5, and even to be six to eight months behind OpenAI. It's important to note that these are all completely open source models uh, being worked on in public as opposed to with OpenAI when they're basically all completely shut off. If we look at the first turn versus second turn, we see similar numbers. What's interesting is on the first turn, OmniBeagle performs incredibly well actually beating Neural Monarch and GPT 3.5 along with Cloud. And I will say on the second turn, we see some other interesting performance, but again, Omni Beagle is still beating GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is pretty cool to see. And another curious thing here is it performs really well in Open LLM's leaderboard, which, you know, we're not really sure why certain models perform better on different leaderboards. It has to do with what they're benchmarking. And of course they're changing constantly to ensure people don't just game them. But uh, I guess here there was a curious problem with the tokenizer. And if you use the Mistral destruct template, it sounds like these issues don't really crop up anyway. And I will say um, clashing construct templates with merges sometimes do arise, but um, yeah, generally merges don't really create these kind of uh, attributes or side effects. What's also really cool is it's now pretty trendy for GGUFs to also be available right off the bat. So those are also available on Hugging Face. So this is the Hugging Face card for Alpha Monarch 7B. And before we look at the entire graph of all the models that were merged into this, I wanna try out at least a few things. So there is an active demo right here. Right now there's an active Hugging Face Spaces that you can try out. It's the GGUF version, but I think it's cool we can try this right now. So right now the system prompt is your helpful assistant. Right now I'm just gonna leave that as is. And I'm gonna try something basic. So I'm doing something kind of conversational, but we'll see how quickly this works. And it looks like this is a four bit quantization, again in GGUF format, and we'll see how this goes. And now we're getting a result. So it's cool to see that it's actually pretty quick. And I gave it kind of a business plan question, which I like to use because it gives it sort of tighter bounds on reasoning and tighter bounds on numbers involved as well. So obviously it's gonna give us a list because basically this has been built on a horde of instruct models, which is kind of interesting. We're gonna try some math and programming and maybe some pros going into the next few questions. So it gave us some pretty good advice to identify the product range. It's now going through the different kinds of flowers that are used for different kinds of bread. I'm gonna ask it one follow-up question about sourdough and why that might be a better idea for customers who are now kind of not that interested in seed oils and we'll see how that goes. So these are the results we got. This is a rough example of a multi-turn question. Technically, this is kind of just the first iteration but it'll be curious to see how aware this is of why seed oils are bad and why sourdough bread actually implicitly doesn't have a lot of seed oils or common gluten that some people don't like. Okay, so this isn't that helpful. It's saying here, offer a variety of sourdough breads made with traditional methods using naturally leavened dough for distinctive flavors and textures. Natural fermentation process. Okay, so this is more marketing than process, but that's kind of interesting. It's now saying, have been transparent. Okay, so this is pretty good. Not exactly what I was looking for, but it's interesting enough. Okay, so let me see here. I'm gonna clear this out. And my next question is going to be kind of a word question that involves math. So obviously the answer to this question is $400. Since, since it cost me $800 initially, I sell it for a thousand. So the difference there is 200. Then I take the money I had, I bought a new cow for 1100, which then I sold for 1300. All right, so let's see what it gets us. So this was pretty quick. And again, the answer here is $400. So we'll see if it has enough reasoning capability to tell us what's going on here. So it understands that we're starting basically at zero with credit. And so there's the first one here. So it's showing us this right now. And yes, that is $200. And now for the second transaction, which is the purchase price of $1,100. And it might get a little tripped up here, but let's see. So then it knows we sell it for 1,300. And there we go, another $200. So now it's going to give us the, the correct answer, which is $400, which I find pretty cool. And for me, I think combining a word problem with math is a great way to see these models work because it's not them just parsing numbers and characters. They're actually having to do some reasoning and understand different parts of what's going on. 
So this is pretty cool. Now I wanna try something a little bit more complex with a coding problem. So for this, I'm gonna do something a little bit more complex than writing Python code to print the Fibonacci sequence. So I'm asking it to pre-optimize and I wanna see if it actually does it. And uh, this was one of the more interesting assignments I had in college when I was studying computer science. So it'll be interesting to see what this does. And there we go. It understands that memoization is a form of caching. And all right, so we're using NumPy and a default dictionary, not a bad approach. And one thing I've always liked with these clever 7 billion parameter models are the ones that give you really good documentation uh, and line level documentation at that, not just kind of like, here's what this function does. And even GPT-4 is actually not very good at this because sometimes it will actually be stating line by line. So the function itself in theory will work, but there'll be a line where it will completely hallucinate and basically tell you it's doing something that's wrong. So obviously these models like to kind of think through kind of grammatically uh, when they do programming questions. And I generally find this pretty interesting. So like for instance, what's cool here is it's telling you exactly how it initialized, which is kind of cool. This is the kind of thing that if I had, well, while I was studying CS, I'd like to think that I would have used this as a study tool, but I know that at least 80% of the class would have just used this to create solutions. And for that reason, I'm still actually pretty glad I didn't have a tool like this around when I was studying computer science. And we're almost there to the end. It'll be curious to see if this actually can give us kind of a test result, um, which GPT-4 can actually do since it can execute code. But let's see. All right, so I actually just pasted this whole thing in and this actually worked on a single shot and I've actually tried to get this through with GPT-4 on the first shot a number of times. And even though GPT-4 can execute code, it wasn't right. So this is just me testing three different questions with this, but I'm really blown away by this model. What's also cool is it shows that you can merge up to 50 times over and over and over again and still basically end up with a 7 billion parameter model. And what's also interesting is all of his DPO code collab is now all in one place. And what's interesting is if you would like to, you can actually train the 7 billion parameter version of this on a single RTX 3090 and then evaluate it with LLM auto eval, which is pretty cool. So because guys in the past, this just would have been unthinkable. The idea that you could completely train a 7 billion parameter model on a 3090, crazy. So I think this is interesting both in terms of benchmarks and also in terms of testing the theoretical limits of how many merges can be combined without creating a bunch of issues with um, side effects or um, unforeseen side effects that just come from different models being combined and kind of mated with each other. So Maxime has some interesting conclusions as well. He says, in conclusion, I find the idea of combining reasoning and conversation abilities quite exciting, especially since as novel as this sounds, it really hasn't been done before. And we weren't really sure if merging could yield this, and it turns out it can. Uh, again, if you want to check this out, I will link the tweet down below. And I just think it's cool that you can merge this many models. I've done a little bit of merging myself, and I will say some of it is actually not that intuitive. For instance, it's easy to think, oh, like if I take two 14 billion parameter models, I should end up with a single resultant 14, parameter, 14 billion parameter model. And although that might seem like the case, there are curious instances where depending on the quantization or depending on the compression that's being used or just the algorithm being used to selectively memoize data sets. So basically like taking things that are similar and condensing them down. Sometimes you don't get kind of a full compression and other times you end up with a model that's a little bit larger or that might actually need a little bit more RAM. However, the real benefit of merging is you get these really cool emergent abilities. And it's important, I think, to discern reasoning ability from other just distinct static abilities, which I think I would call skills. So just getting the wording right of noting certain things as abilities, certain things as skills, I think is really cool. And reasoning, I don't think is right to call a skill because reasoning in theory can apply to numerous things. In mixture of experts models, it's a bit easier because you can discreetly see where that's happening. And it's cool that we now have some tools to actually visualize some of that reasoning in real time. So let me know what you think about this model. I'm gonna try this out locally. It's also really cool to see this massive tree where you can see we're starting with MetaMath and Mistral AI 7B, and then moving through some models from Intel and Technium, all the way down to some work from uh, Eric Hartford, which is always cool to see, OpenOrca, 
moving all the way down here into some later derivations. Um, and th what's cool here is also there's there are a bunch of different derivations of Beagle. So we have uh, Neural Beagle, Beagle 14, and it's important to note that it all ends up in the end as Alpha Monarch 7B, Neural Monarch 7B, and Monarch 7B. So what's curious is we even got really, really different results even just in the last three merges, which I think is pretty cool. So again, it's cool to see it as uh, this graph here, uh, my, the CS student in me likes to think about this. So yeah, I hope you learned something. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.